On this episode, we underestimate keyboards. There's a lot to it. <laughs> we probably forget things like the backspace key. The little details. Ah! But then we bring it back. Backspace back. All right. Hmm. Hi, everybody. This is Christian. This is the advanced schmuck tutorial on Lazy Devs Academy. This is episode 30, I think, if I counted correctly. I might not be counting correctly. Um, the previous, the basic schmuck tutorial went to episode 29, I think. And this is episode 30. So in advanced schmuck tutorial, the point at where we would be finished with, our, with a basic schmuck tutorial. Now, what are we doing? We're making, <laughs> we're recreating Excel. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but trust me, trust me, there is, there is, it's, it's going, going to be fine. We now have a little editor that we can, uh, uh, we can move around the cursor in between different cells, and we want to now create a system where we can edit individual cells. We already have a system. Um, we already have a system, and but that system is not great <laughs> because it allows you just like increase or decrease by one. That's not great. We would love to be able to select the cell and just type in a number. I think that's something that will come up over and over again in any kind of editor that might should be useful in any kind of editor. So I want to just establish a system that allows us to, to do this. Okay, so last time around I've shown you, I've shown you this um, some kind of like a little bit of a uh, debug, a little bit of a you know a hello world situation. I've shown you how you can pull uh, key presses from the from the keyboard, and then you can assemble a string out of the individual key presses to type in stuff. But now today we are going to do this, um, you know, more systematically. I'm going to uh, actually encapsulate it in its own function. I think that might be fun. So we're going to call the function uh, do keyboard. Maybe let's call it do keys. Do keys. Um, we're gonna grab all that stuff from there because we might need it. And then an update function before we update, we're gonna do 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 keys. Right. Um, so uh, we're gonna do the same thing as before if stat thirty. Then, uh, and then we're gonna have a variable called just key, and we're gonna set key to stat thirty one, and we're gonna go else. Um, key equals nil. Uh, we want to make sure that key always resets to nil uh, on frames where no key, uh, no key was pressed. And if we keep a key pressed for many frames, I don't know, then I'm, we're going to see what happens. <laughs> there's one more thing that I want to address here at this point, and that is, uh, ooh, wow, there's some problem here. Oh yeah, we have to single, single equals. Um, uh, oh yeah, but, but let me debug this out, by the way. I want to have be like debug. one equals key. Okay, so now if I press a key in one frame, in the first frame when I press a key, I, I get something, otherwise I get nothing. That's good. Now you notice here there's a problem here. Hmm. And that is when I press the P button, that's actually a shortcut for the menu to pop up. Ooh, that's not cool. Yeah, so how do we de deal with that? By the way, the same thing with enter. And we might, when you type in, you know, you almost instinctively com confirm with enter. So for both for the enter and for the P button, it's a bit bit of a, yeah, it's awkward that the menu opens up. Can we somehow avoid the menu opening up? Yes, we can. So I have a little bit of snippet that I prepared here. Um, I, I did, did some digging in the, in the memory and then we're gonna go like if key uh, equals P then and then paste, I'm gonna paste this, this little snippet here. So this is the address, and if you write one into this address, that will prevent the next time this menu will open up. It will just stop that for one time. So it doesn't turn off the menu completely, it just turns it on for one time. And that's exactly what we want. If we hit the key once, we want to avoid the menu opening. Uh, but we don't want to turn off the menu entirely, right? Because we our export function is in there, right? So now pressing P won't trigger the menu. Pressing Enter still triggers the menu. 
Uh, but in this case, I want to have some way to opening the menu. It's not like I don't want to delete the menu. So I want to keep around maybe the enter as a way to open the menu. We just want to turn off this, this shortcut. Okay, this was cool stuff. But you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Um, let's, let's remove this part. And let's go in here. This is, I think, interesting part. So now, right now we're increasing that, that, the data by one. I want to remove this. And uh, now when I interact with a, menu, with a cell and it has the edit tag uh, command associated with it, I want to now actually edit the value by typing in the value. So now in this, this moment, I want to trigger a, like a mode uh, and that mode will allow me to type in a value into this little, into this little box. Uh, the way I want to do this is I want to actually um, store all the key presses in a variable, in a separate variable, in its own type in variable. I'm going to keep storing these things while I type in. And the moment I press enter, I want to take the contents of that variable and I want to dump it into our data array. But only when I, once I press enter. And the reason is I don't want to be changing the value and the underlying values while I'm typing in because I might be typing ridiculous stuff. I might type stuff that is not a number, I might, stuff type, I might remove everything and that will make the cell disappear. Like there's all sorts of silly stuff I could be doing while I'm typing in. I want to input that value into our data only when the user is ready to commit to that data, right? That's, the problem here is obviously that our entire menu is kind of driven by the data. Uh, so I don't want to actually change the, the UI. I don't want to change that, that UI. I, what I want to do is I want to draw the UI as normal. And then on top of the UI, I will draw like a little box where our, little, where our key presses will begin. And it will look as if I'm typing into the box, but actually I'm overwriting, <laughs> I'm writing on top of that box and writing the letters in there. Let me show you what I mean. So um, this is a different mode, so to speak. So, technically the state machine, but we're going to actually take advantage of something really fun, I think. And that is that um, you see how our mode is like bifurcated. You know, we have like two different things. We have the draw function and we have the update function. In this case, we actually don't want to change the draw function. The draw function will basically be the same. We're going to tweak this around, but we're going to want to still draw that entire uh, table. Um, but the behavior, well, what happens when you press keys, that's, that will, should change. So I actually want to do something like, we want to change the update function. We're going to, set, uh, change, we're going to set the UPD to, uh, let's call it UPD type. So that's going to be like a function that is specifically there. I'm going to <laughs> define function right there, here down, down here. It's going to be like a universal type uh, function that deals with typing. Uh, and here is going to be smart stuff that is going to you know, deal with all the key presses and so forth. Now, because I'm editing a value that already exists, I want to um, add that value. I want to um, you know, extract the value from the, from the data that we are talking about, right? So we just do something like, uh, we want to define, first of all, the variable that is, will accept our key presses. And that variable is going to be, let's call this type txt. That's going to be the variable that accepts our key presses. And again, we don't want to start it empty. We actually want to start it with something inside. And that's going to be the value that was in that cell previously. Uh, we could, yeah, we could just like go my menu.txt, right? I feel like that's okay. Let's try that. Okay, so far so good. Uh, let me now, let me now here down here in the UPD type function. Let me now here do something like if key then, so if the, there was a key press then, uh, type txt plus equals key, right? Which is when I'm gonna add the key presses to our variable, right? Um, and we just, I just wanna now see the variable. <laughs> I just wanna see it. So maybe here in a draw function, or let, let's just do it in here, why not? Uh, debug one equals type txt, right? That's our type variable. Uh, there's a problem here. Oh yeah, open close. Right, so now I'm moving. I'm pressing the button to enter this edit mode. Now you see the 15 was carried into our little variable that holds the key presses. And now we can, I press the button. Uh, 
Oh, right, I cannot do plus equals, right? It's a uh, strings and strings cannot be added. They have to be, you, you have to use a dot dot operator. To, I think concat, I think is, is that is, is how we call that. Okay, again, 15 is in our thing. Hello. Okay, so this works. Now I want, don't want the hello to be, to be drawn in the debug. I want the hello to be drawn on top of the cell that we are editing. So I'm going to copy this type txt here. I'm going to go in the draw function. And here, after we've drawn the menu, after the entire menu is on the screen, only then, because we want to draw th these things on top, right? We're going to go if, and then we're going to check. <laughs> it's going to be a bit hack, but I'm going to check if upd equals upd type. So if we are currently typing something, then, all right. Um, so I want to grab, well, let me uh, let me paste this in here real quick. Uh, so it's going to be the same, same code as here. I want to grab the current menu that is being selected, the menu, the, the current UI element that's being selected, this. And then I'm going to just BG print this into there. Like this. It's so easy. Look. I'm going to BG print this little variable that holds our key presses. I'm going to BG print this just like right on top of, of that menu element. Like this. And the color is going to be automatically seven. We will always want to draw it in white. And that is it. So again, we use our 15 because we love it so much. It worked. Oh, I cannot press enter. I cannot backspace, but it works technically. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, so the zero. See, the problem is now I pressed, but I don't see any indication that I, I'm editing this value. So in terms of feedback, this is a horrible feedback situation. But yeah, it works. I can I can type in into, into this, this field. And of course, I'm overwriting stuff next to it, but once I press enter, that will sort itself out, hopefully. Let us set up a bit of a to-do list of the things that are still not working. First of all, I want a cursor. I want a nice, fancy, blinking cursor. Um, show cursor. First of all, I want to just show the cursor. Then I want to um, move the cursor. I want to be able to go back, you know, and, and so because, you know, in a cursor, like, you have like a cursor like here, where it's just like this little box. You can move it, move it left and right, and you can start writing in the middle of the word, right? Like this is like a basic functionality of any kind of text editing feature. <laughs> we have to replicate that stuff. There's a lot to it. <laughs> so you kind of like, you take a lot to, for granted when you when you start thinking about how we, uh, you know, modify text in, in, on computers. So we all want to move the cursor. We want to have a backspace. And we want to have an enter. These are the things that I want to show the cursor, move the cursor and backspace are kind of like all parts of the same thing. I mean, backspace is kind of okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think enter is the one that I'm, I'm most concerned about right now. Let's try to enter for now. Right, um, so we're getting the key. And here's the thing, um, enter is not like a, a character. It's not like the, the E or I or T. And it's not necessarily like a string character that you can see on the screen, but there, it, there is a character associated with the enter key. It's just not visible. And we can check for that character, but we have to use like special commands. Um, so we're going to do something like if key equals, and then the special command for enter is, I have written this down, is, oh yeah, backslash R backslash r is going to be enter. So if somebody presses r, uh, I want important stuff to happen. Otherwise, uh, otherwise I want just to the key press to be added to our, wait, <laughs> to our variable that contains the key presses. Okay, and here when I press the, the key, I want to have, I want to just write press, press, enter to, I want to write that on the screen. So let's see if that worked. 
See, that didn't work because the enter opens up the menu, but we have to fix for that. We have to fix. We already know how to fix that. That's going to be this poke here. Right? So let's save this. Let's run this. So I'm going to enter editing mode. Press enter. I pressed enter. Um, why did the debug go away? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, because I always write something to the the debug. Let me let me remove all the debug stuff previously. Let's try this again. So I'm going into here, pressing editing, pressing enter. I pressed enter. That worked. So now when I press enter, I want to let me just like just to be really sure, just, just to really sh clearly show that I'm editing this value as long as we don't have the cursor. Let me make the value a different color. Uh, let me turn it a yellow. It was all yellow. So now it's yellow. Now we're editing thing, things. And when you press enter, I want it to turn back from yellow to normal again, to white. Um, right, so if I press enter, I want UPD, uh, underscore UPD, to be UPD uh, table, I think it's called, right? UPD table, yeah. So I want the UPD to be returned to the regular UPD. Um, so let's try that real quick. So yeah, I'm editing, blah, 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 enter. That's good, but now whatever I typed in is kind of like discarded, right? So it would be nice if whatever I typed in was actually mattered, was actually put into the data. Um, and gonna, we can do that. We can just say like, um, uh, we did, oh man, did we delete everything? We did delete everything. Okay, so let's go data, square brackets, square brackets, equals um, type txt. Like that um, and then we have to figure out you know what cell that we're editing right now but we can get that from um, my menu oh we don't have the my menu in here okay no problem no problem no problem so when we press enter we're gonna grab the my menu we're gonna grab the UI item that we're currently editing this is this thing and then we're gonna go CMD Y CMD X Like that. Let's try this. Yeah, it worked. So now we can we can add these things now. 45, 20, 223. We can now quickly edit these things. Now we lacking the backspace functionality. It's kind of like a very important functionality to kind of like get rid of text that was already there before. But we definitely can edit the individual cells now. That's nice. Something I would maybe do here. Um, that might be actually important is like um, because in this specific editor in this specific case all of the data is our numbers and I kind of want to convert it to numbers whatever I typed in I want to convert it to numbers so if I write in some kind of gibberish I want that to be converted to a number so it's like 22h that's turned into a nil right <laughs> Because 22 eight is not a number, so it cannot convert that to a, it returns nil, basically. Um, something we can do here is um, we can do type text equals to num type text. And then if type text equals nil, then um, there is actually something that Else, that we might do there, there we might delete things and so forth. But for now, we just reset it to zero, and and then we type this into we put that. So we convert the type text into a, a, a number, and if that fails for some reason, we just set it to zero and we write the zero into the entry. So I'm gonna start writing, blah, 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 and that gets returned, uh, changed back to zero. Cool. Uh, but this might this little thing here. This might change uh, in other editors when we later on make other editors and maybe there's going to be uh, uh, places where we can type in a name of like an enemy, for example. And in these cases, you want to actually type in the string here. But yeah, that's something that maybe comes up later. Okay, now that we dealt with that, I want us to deal with, um, with these three things. We want to show the cursor, we want to be able to move the cursor, and we finally want to add the backspace. The backspace kind of, I feel, related to the other th three. We could do the backspace immediately, but 
we didn't have to re 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 change it a lot. I, first, I want to maybe show a cursor. I, I want to show a cursor in a way that, uh, again, if you look at this, so now the cursor at the end, that's good, it's blinking. We want to have like this blinking box. Um, but then later on, we want to be able to move the cursor into the text kind of like. So the blinking box is overlaid over on top of the text. Um, so that's going to be a bit tricky, but, but we're going to get there, don't worry. Uh, something I want to do here is here's where we initiate the editing. Um, I want to add in a new variable, and that's going to be the position of the cursor. So we're going to type cur, uh, and we're going to set it to some kind of position. That position is going to be uh, the length of the text, my menu dot, uh, and I typed the length of the text like this, plus one. Uh, because if I start editing something, I want the cursor to be at the end of the text, like not like not at the final letter of the text, but actually one further, like beyond that uh, the text that is already there, right? Okay, so now where we, I want to maybe move the cursor around a little bit. Um, so this is UPD type, uh, and we're gonna do something like if btn pl, then, and so if we're pressing left or we're pressing right, uh, then I wanna change this value. I just like to, to so the value changes at all. Um, so that's going to be position of the cursor. I'm going to go minus equal one, uh, minus equal one if we're moving it left, plus equal one if we're moving it right. And then I'm going to debug it. Right? And uh, let's remove this debug for now. Let's run this. Okay, so now I'm editing this. <laughs> what? Uh, maybe, uh, I think this might not be a string. So let's let's force uh, whatever that was there to a string, to a string. Ah, now it worked, okay. Good, so this is good. Now we see the, uh, the cursor is at position three. That's good because we're editing a, a string of two characters, one and five and the cursor is at three, and we can move it left, and we can move it right. That's good. We want to maybe actually, when we're moving the cursor, we want to maybe confine it, so we're going to do something like if, uh, no, uh, type cur equals mid, we don't want it to be at position zero ever, um, and we don't want it to be further right than, than, uh, than, uh, the length of the text plus one, right? So, so we put it up like this. So now it's confined to, right, it's three. We cannot get it further than three and we cannot get it lower than one. So now the cursor is kind of like confined in like reasonable values. Good. So now that we have the data underneath, when it comes to the cursor, it's changing. Now I want to actually see the cursor. How are we going to actually draw the cursor to the screen? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's, hmm. <laughs> okay, so let me show you something. There is a, because again, we have this, remember how we have this? We have like these special characters that we can add to a text string. And if we then print the text string, that text string would have some special properties. We can do the same thing. Um, to achieve the effect that we're going for. Something you can do is, um, I'm gonna show you a special character. <laughs> so backslash, then this roof, I don't know, what, what's the name of that? <laughs> this character, okay. <laughs> and I, um, that will invert the text. Yeah, let me show you how that looks like. So we're gonna edit the 15, I love the 15. And now the whole entire 15 is inverted, right? Like the white or the, the color of the foreground has turned into the for, for color of the background, the background has become the foreground. Um, we're going to use this effect to draw our cursor and that will allow us to move the cursor on top of already existing uh, text, right? Um, so now the goal that we want to achieve, what we're trying to achieve is when we're printing stuff to the screen, we want to insert this character, this little, these four, three characters at the right place into the string. Uh, 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 that's going to be a bit messy. <laughs> okay, I, I have I have a little cheat sheet prepared here because I was 
Oh man, I this com pro this is this is probably going to be a bit too complicated. Like there's probably a more efficient way of doing this. But whatever, it's the editor. We don't care about the tokens now. It's just like whatever. Uh, I'm gonna split the string into uh, that we're drawing, like the little string here that we're drawing, the little edit string. I want to split it into three parts. First is the part of the string that is before the cursor. Then there's this one letter that is the cursor, that this, the, the cursor is currently hovering over. And then the, the part of the string that comes after the cursor. And then we combine these three strings and insert our little uh, inverter, <laughs> inverter characters in between them. We're gonna sandwich it together. We're gonna split it into pieces and sandwich it together back. Uh, that's, that's my plan. So first of all, uh, again, I'm gonna refer to my little cheat sheet so I don't do here. So we're gonna have like something like a, a txt uh, beth for, for before. Uh, it's gonna be something. We're gonna be txt the actual cursor. And then we're gonna uh, have txt aft for after the cursor, right? And now all we need to do is we need to fill these three, three things with stuff. And then uh, we're gonna do something like local txt equals, then we're gonna take the before, the during, the actual cursor, and the after. We're gonna sandwich those together. And then remember, we want to add the cursor here, the inverter. So we're gonna add the inverter before the cursor. And then after the cursor, we want to turn off the inverter again, and there's a special command for this as well. That's a special command. <laughs> it's called pico8 ascii. Yeah, if you want to look this up uh, in the wiki, it's called p8 ski, p pico8 ascii. There's all those sorts of different commands and special characters that you can use to format the text in the print command. They're all listed in here. I also made a special video for this, and I might show it here. Right, so now this has been solved. Uh, let me first see if this works. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, yeah, we're gonna print this to the screen. We're gonna go A, B, C. Let's see if this works. So now it should turn into A, B, C and the B should be um, inverted. That worked. That's what we're looking for. So now instead of A, B, C, I wanna actually fill this in with information from our actual uh, uh, type txt uh, variable. So first let's deal with the before part. Um, there's a function called sub. And again, let's look at the wiki entry for that. Sub is like the core uh, function for string manipulation. So sub is a function. It takes a string that you want to manipulate or that you want to extract part of it. Uh, then you say the start at from which you are extracting from, and then you also want to maybe specify it, but you don't have to specify an end. And then uh, this whole function will return like a substring, a part of that initial string that will start at this position and end at this position. If you don't supply an end, it will just return the rest of the string, right? So let's say you have a string of three characters and you want to, the start is gonna be two, then it will return two and three automatically. You don't have to specify the end in this case. And here's some examples to kind of like give you an idea of what this can look like. Right, so let's see if we can make this work. So the before part is gonna be uh, type txt. That's gonna be the thing that we're working on. Uh, we're gonna start at one and we're gonna go all the way to uh, type cur, but minus one, right? Yeah, minus one. Um, so this is going to be the, because we want to have the part before the cursor, is the cursor at, is at position 2, then we want to, don't want to actually include the position 2. We just want to have position 1 and that's it. We don't want to have position 2 because that's where the cursor is. Um, then the actual cursor, um, there's, these days there's an easy way of doing this, but I'm going to just keep using sub because I think that's a, that's a, um, yeah, this just something that we're uh, we're familiar with. So that that will just return one string, and that's this type cur string. Uh, and then, and then, C is going to be a type uh, type cur plus one. And then we're going to leave out the last argument. 
So it will just return the address of the string beginning with the next space after the cursor. Okay, so let's see how that works. Ah! See, it works, but it doesn't work if the cursor is in a position that is outside of the string. So we need to maybe uh, pay attention to that a little bit. So in here, we're gonna do like a, a ternier. Type cur, so if type cur is greater than the length of type, if type cur is greater than the length of type, you know what we can do? It might be even easier. Uh, we're gonna run all this and we're gonna do it like here, txt cur equals uh, txt cur if that's if that's nothing if that's an empty string and then we're gonna set it to a space character or we're gonna set it to whatever was there that's gonna be a fix that's that's, a, that's a also ternary but it's a slightly different ternary right so let's see if that works right so now we have the cursor and now we can go back and go forth. And we have the cursor now. The cursor is not blinking. Let's make the cursor blink. Okay, something we can do here is gonna we're gonna use a time function. So if uh, time, uh, let's do a modulo one, modulo one, if that's smaller than zero point five. Um, so time is just like a running counter of how many seconds have elapsed since the program has started, and it's gonna have comma values as well. Um, we do a modulo one. So we just, you know, every second it resets to zero. So we just have a comma value, always a comma value from zero, comma something, it will always be a comma value. And if that comma value is smaller than 0 0.5, then we're gonna do something. Otherwise we're not gonna do it. Uh, and the thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually also uh, employ the text cursor here. Something we can do here is gonna text cursor. And these little things, we're gonna actually bake them into the cursor. So. I'm gonna grab them out here. I'm gonna go like this, dot, dot, text cursor, dot, dot. And this is the closing character. This is where it inverts the cursor back. And then we, when we sandwich them together, we don't need those elements. We, uh, we adding those uh, inverter characters only certain amount of time, then that will make the cursor blink. Yeah, this works, it just works. Um, maybe a bit slow, let me speed this up a little bit. Uh, let's go time multiplied by two, let's see how that works. Yeah, that's better, that's a better curse. Okay, okay, this works. We don't need to, uh, don't need to turn it yellow anymore, we can now leave it white because now we clearly see where we're editing stuff. Right? We can see clearly that we are adding this. This is good. We can move this around. The problem is when we type a, a thing, it doesn't get inserted where the cursor is. It, it gets inserted always at the end. So we now have to also keep that in mind. We have to insert the characters at the right position. And you know what? That's kind of going to be a similar situation that we have here. So we're going to actually copy this part out because that's kind of like really useful. Um, so we're going to copy this. And now when we are... Um, uh, doing the update here. Now we're not just adding the new characters at the end. I mean, sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. And we wanna make sure that if we're adding uh, characters in the middle of the text that we're actually putting them where they belong. So we're gonna do something like if type cur is greater than length of type text, then this is this is regular stuff. This is this is behavior as we had before. Otherwise, otherwise we are actually inserting the characters in the middle, and then we're gonna do our sandwich again because we're a bit lazy here. Uh, we might not need. To, so how does it work? Like so, when I press a button here now, okay. So it gets always inserted before. It gets always inserted before the actual cursor. So um, we just need this. We just need the, the aft and before, right? 
we just need everything uh, until the space before the cursor. And then we need uh, everything starting with the cursor all the way to the end. And we need to sandwich the new letter in between there. So we're going to go type text plus uh, equals uh, the before dot dot key and after. Right, so if I'm editing this and now I go here and I go press one, the one gets inserted in the right place. Uh, it's a bit weird that the cursor is not moving. I don't think that's the, the behavior. Usually when you start pressing, you want the cursor to keep moving, right? <laughs> Little details. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is also something that we need to keep in mind when we write here. We want to, the cursor to keep moving, right? So uh, every, every time I add something to the character we want to uh, to the string we want to move the cursor so type cur plus equals one hello hello yeah this seems like the right behavior <laughs> oh what i think when we press enter we should we want to we want to return Okay, good. That's a lot of text to be typing, but we're not done yet. There's one more feature that we absolutely need, and that is uh, pressing backspace. Uh, I'm gonna um, clarify that this is uh, enter. Uh, and then here, I'm gonna go else, else if key equals, uh, I'm gonna look it up what, what the character for backspace is, and then this is gonna be Mm, this is going to be back, backspace. All right, I think the backspace is this, but I'm not really sure if it is. So let's let's debug this. Ah. Backspace, back. All right. It's not doing, oh wait, wait, we should be editing this. Yes, it worked, okay. <laughs> I was worried there for a second. Okay, so what is happening when we are backspacing? Well, we definitely want to move the cursor back. All right. Um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, let's just do something like, okay, so if we're gonna copy all the stuff that where we are adding keys, but we're gonna rewrite this a little bit. Um, so if the cursor is at the very end, then this is kind of like a simpler situ situation. We're gonna go sub type txt, uh, comma one, comma hashtag type txt, the length of the text minus one. We're just removing the last character, right? We're just um, uh, using the sub to uh, return a smaller string from this bigger string that is going to be starting at position one and going all the way to the end minus one. So we're kind of like removing the last character. Um, if the cursor is somewhere in, in the middle, then things are going to get a bit more difficult. Then the before part is going to be type cur minus two because we're removing one character there. And the after tar part is going to be uh, yeah, it's going to be just where the cursor was previously. Because if I select the X and press backspace, the X is not the thing that gets deleted. The T gets deleted. Uh, yeah. So let's try that. Right, so I'm selecting this. Now I'm, uh, I want the 5 to get removed. The 5 got removed. And now let's go A, B, C. Uh, I want now the A to be removed. Uh, that is not what happened. That is not what happened. Oh yeah, we need to remove the key here. Like this, let's try that. So let's try A, B, C. Now we want the B to be removed. The B was removed. I want the uh, one to be removed. The one was removed, good. Uh, oh, okay, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want the backspace to work if we are on the, on the first position. So we're gonna go if 
type cur is greater than one, then so I want all this only work to work when the type cur is uh, so if backspace. Yeah, now pressing backspace doesn't do anything. Oh wait, so, something is wrong here. Something is wrong here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the problem here. Yeah, yeah. See if um, the problem is if we have the characters being deleted as the first character in the string, uh, this sub will return a weird value because what we're doing here now is returning the. It should return just an empty string. But we're already starting at the first character, and that already implies that the string is not empty. So we have to do maybe an exception here. So something like uh, if type if type cur equals two, then else. Six and a half hours later. Oh, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. It all worked fine. I've just, uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I got it, I get it, okay. So the problem is, uh, what actually happened is the text that was on in the box previously, the in the regular menu box, in the unchanged menu box, that was sometimes shining through. Um, so what we want to maybe do here is we don't want to print the contents of that box if we are currently typing. So something like, um, so if this is the selected box, we're going to do something like if um, e upd is equals upd type, then uh, we could set c to just black and then we won't see the text that was there before. So let's try that. See, that, that, that wasn't a six that was added, it was just the six that was already there in the box before. So now, now this, this works correctly. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if we actually need this. Uh, we, we might have fooled ourselves. We might have fooled ourselves. Let's try that, removing that. What we just added here, this, this exception here, maybe we don't need that actually anymore. Did we fool ourselves? Yeah, we fooled ourselves. I like how I made up this fake explanation for what is happening. Well, it was a plausible explanation, right? It seemed plausible. Yeah, but it seems to be, it seems robust now. Wow, minus 32,000. Yeah, that might make sense because uh, we went uh, with bounce. Cool, it works. And of course, now that it works, I want to make actually make sure that we can actually write in uh, interesting values in here. Let's put number six is six, uh, and then export it, uh, and then let's run it. And yeah, the six is six is still in there. Yay! Okay, good. Let's remove it back to zero because that was what what was there on it. Oh, I didn't export it. <laughs> Just remember to export, kids. Uh, there we go. <laughs> 66. Oh. Oh, I think I might have made a huge mistake. <laughs> because when I export it, I put the... I, it must have exported at some point, and I put this little debug row that we have to for the horizontal scroll. I put that in here. Uh, so let me restore, because this is now actually relevant. Because now if we run our game, our game might get, get broken. But let me run our game real quick. Yeah, you see one of the frames of our ship is now broken. <laughs> no! So let me restore the old value real quick. Yeah, and here I'm gonna paste in uh, a copy of the shmup my SPR from our backups. So if you messed up your shmup on my SPR, you can get it down and doobly-doo. There's gonna be links for, you know, the code before and after each episode for you to download. So we can restore it from that backup if you don't have your own backup. Let's run this. Yeah, now the now it looks good. Now the there is no blinking anymore. Good. Let us now move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Right. This was a tough. This was a tough episode because there's just this is a lot of code 
that goes into editing stuff. There's like so many little exceptions, so many little details. There's still one thing that I haven't implemented and that is the delete key. We cannot delete stuff. Delete does nothing. And I'm not sure how to do that in PQ8. If you have an idea of how to do that in PQ8, then do let me know in the comment section because man, I I just, I, I, I usually use backspace anyway, but uh, if you know how to do a delete, do let me know. So we have this thing going on. This is good. I'm happy about that. But there is still stuff missing. There's two important features that I'm missing in this editor and that's something we're gonna tackle next time. But maybe you already have some ideas of how to add this functionality. Functionality number one, very important. We can edit existing value, that's cool. But how do we add more values? Because that's something that will inevitably, in, inevitably <laughs> easy for me to say, inevitably, that's will something that will be coming up in this kind of editor. When we add new sprites to our sprite system, then we want to add a new row of data. So I want you to come up with an idea of how to add UI to add a new row of data. Number one. Number two, the very opposite. What if I want to delete a row of data? What if I made a mistake and I just want to delete a row? Or what if, for example, you have like sometimes you have, um, you know, sometimes it's six values per row, and but sometimes you can add an additional value for special effects and an additional value for, uh, for, um, for the next uh, functionality, for the next sprite functionality, for the sprite chaining functionality. But what if you added this, but then you want to you change your mind and you want to delete the individual cells? What? Do, how do you delete individual cells? How do you delete in the, uh, whole lines? I want you to come up with ideas of how to make this work naturally and easily. These two challenges. These are kind of like design challenges, but also implementation challenges. And these are the things that we're going to talk about on the next episode. For now, let's move on to this final part of each episode where I say a big thank you to all of the supporters on coffee.com slash lazydfs who are supporting this show, who are making this show possible. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, and also, I wanted to maybe read out some comments. Um, so this one is by... I, I'm, I can't really read Russian, but I think it's Sergei Kotkov. Um, and he wrote on episode 17. Uh, if you ever run out of map space, uh, example for hard mode, you can redesign the vertical scrolling system in a more context dependent way. It makes scrolling segments even shorter, uh, e.g. eight tiles vertically. Some for the farm, some for the ward tiles, some for the meadows, one for the ruined grocery, etc. And then build the map from those short segments to get many map patterns that don't seem repeated. This will allow you to create either, either map many map scenarios or longer maps yeah that's a good idea um i uh, to be honest i haven't been experimenting with different sized segments so that's fine if you want to go for it knock yourself out uh something i probably won't do is i probably won't have a different map for if i include a hard mode i probably will keep uh, the same background map around and i only will change the enemy spawns so in this regard i'm not really that concerned about that um, and also I feel the map is long enough, so I'm happy with what I have right now. Um, but yeah, definitely, it might be fun and more interesting. You might be more um, uh, flexible if you make this segment smaller. Something that I, I do want to pay attention to is if the segments get really small, if they're like really like little thin strips, then it might be difficult like visually when you're editing in the, in the level editor it might be difficult visually to like understand what they're supposed to be like because they turn into some some abstract gibberish basically that only makes sense once you put them together um so i think if the i suspect that if the, if the, if the strips if the segments get too small then you might be have to rely more on external editors you might have to actually write an editor. I'm kind of happy that with the system we have right now, that it's a half screen strip, and that when you look at it in the editor, it kind of still makes sense. You kind of see how they, they belong together. Uh, but yeah, if you have any experience with working with smaller segments, do let me know, I'm actually curious. Yes, yes, yes. So we're in the middle of creating our, our little Excel, recreating the functionality of Excel in, in PQ8, but we're, it's, it's fine, like we're getting there, I think. There's just one more episode for uh, for UI stuff, and then we can get some to some juicy, juicy, juicy actual editor making. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.